مش عارفين كيف تحضروا لامتحانات الدخول للجامعة خاصة إذا أنتوا رايحين على الـ BAU Entrance Exams وفي قصص بالمدرسة ما بتركزوا عليها في chapters ما رح توصلوا لها في حتى chapters بتكون ملغية ب grade 12 الأس بس تل بيجي عليها أسئلة بامتحانات الدخول طيب شو رأيكم أنا وياكم نشرح شيء بسيط من اللي بيجي بامتحانات الدخول ومش بس هيك نحل سامبلز أنا وياكم ليه اللي ما بيعرفنا أنا مسها بعلم بايولوجي لا جريد 12 الأس بحضر الطلاب للامتحانات الرسمية ولا امتحانات الدخول بالبايولوجي خلينا نروح على الشرح لكن شرحنا حيكون اليوم له علاقة ب chapter 1 خلينا بلش بالفرق بين ديبلويد و هابلويد سيلز ولازم قبل ما تروحوا على الامتحان تتأكدوا انكم تعرفوا انه ديبلويد سيلز هن اكتر شي البودي سيلز والهابلويد سيلز هن الجاميتس يعني الهابلويد سيلز هن السبرم والأوفيوم او الأوفيول او الأوسايت اوكي سو so شي يعني ديبلويد؟ ديبلويد لما يكون في عندي two copies of each chromosome. So إذا أنا from each chromosome عندي two copies وهول two copies بسميهم homologous chromosomes. So بهيد الحالة هيد السال we call it diploid cells. Okay. However, if you find inside the cell only one copy of each chromosome C. From this chromosome, I have only one copy. However, in the diploid cell, I have two copies from each chromosome. I have pairs. بينما بالهابلويد, we do not have pairs. We have only one copy of each chromosome. In this case, we call it a haploid cell. And pay attention. This have no relation with the number of chromatids per chromosome. يعني أنا I don't care whether the cell contains a chromosome with two chromatids or a chromosome with one chromatid. Okay? Sorry, we have the centromere wrong. So these cells contain a pair of chromosomes. So from each chromosome, you have two copies. Okay? Regardless of the number of chromatids. So these two cells are diploid cells. Okay? However, for example, if I draw this cell or this cell, so these two cells are haploid. Why? Because from each chromosome, I have only one copy. Okay? So this is the difference between diploid and haploid cells. Now, you have also to know how we make a karyotype. This is an example of karyotype. Karyotype is a photo of arranged chromosomes how these chromosomes are arranged in this photo or in the karyotype by decreasing order size of chromosome the position of the centromere they are grouped in paired and the banding pattern يعني chromosomes when I put them on the karyotype the um, dark band should be at the same level and the light band at the same level, okay? So in order to make a karyotype, first of all, we take blood because it's the easiest way to get cells. And then I culture these cells. Why do we culture these cells? Simply to enhance mitosis, to let these cells undergo cell division. And I have chromosomes only during cell division. So I need cells that are undergoing mitosis or cell division. If I take cells that are during interface, they are not making cell division, I will not find chromosomes. I'm going to find chromatin, which are these thin filaments. Okay, so because I need cells during mitosis, so I culture them. I add some chemical substances in order to enhance mitosis. And then I add a substance called colchicine. Why colchicine? Because colchicine blocks cell division or mitosis, 
especially at metaphase. Leish, because at metaphase, I have very individualized chromosomes. The chromosomes are very clear, and each chromosome is made up of two chromatids. Okay, so please, I want you to memorize that colchicine is a substance added. And why? Because it's going to block mitosis at metaphase. So, for example, if they're going to ask you at which phase the chromosomes of karyotype are observed, it's during metaphase. Okay? And then we fix the cell, we spread them, we digest them, and finally, we obtain a micro photography. So, please, do not understand that the chromosomes are really in this form inside our cells. They are not classified. Okay? So, first of all, we obtain a microphotography, which is a photo of the microscope uh, inside our cells, and then we cut out the chromosomes and classify them to obtain a new photo called karyotype. Okay? Now, what's the difference between condensation and decondensation. First of all, you have to know the difference between chromatin, which is the genetic material of cells that are during interphase. As you know, interphase is a phase between two mitoses, okay? And chromosomes so these thin filament, please chromatin with an N. So these filaments will condense to obtain these structures that we call chromosomes. Okay, the chromosomes are seen in the cell during division, during mitosis, during meiosis. Okay, so now. When the chromatin turns into chromosomes, so chromatin, the thin filament, into condensed chromosomes, this is what we call condensation. And this condensation takes place during prophase, so in the first step of mitosis. Okay? The opposite, so the chromosomes turn into chromatin, okay? This is what we call decondensation. And decondensation takes place during telophase, which is the last phase of mitosis, okay? So condensation from chromatin to chromosomes and decondensation from chromosomes to chromatin. And now let's talk about mitosis. Well, mitosis is the division of cells and which is going to lead to the formation of two daughter cells containing the same number of chromosomes. And please pay attention. I'm saying containing the same number of chromosomes and I'm not saying containing the same amount of genetic material. Deal? So here we start up by two unequal four chromosomes and we end up by two unequal four chromosomes. Lish two and lish diploid because the chromosomes are identical two by two. I have two copies of each chromosome. Okay? Pay attention. The interphase is a phase that comes before mitosis and where each chromosome of one chromatid duplicates itself to become uh, two chromatids. Okay, and if I'm talking about the amount of genetic material or I'm talking about the mass of chromosomes, it's going to be reduced. Yani, I'm going to suppose here that the amount of um, DNA is four arbitrary units. <clears throat> so the four arbitrary units are for the four chromosomes or the eight chromatids. This amount will be reduced into half, so four units here and four unit for the second cell. So pay attention, the number of chromosomes remains constant during mitosis. However, the amount of uh, DNA, the mass of chromosomes is reduced to its half. 
Now rapidly, let's talk about the phases of mitosis. So as we said, please pay attention. Interphase comes before, before mitosis. It's not a step of mitosis. The steps of mitosis are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And in order to study them in their chronological order, you can study the simple sentence. Pay me attention. So P stands for prophase, me for metaphase, A for anaphase, and T for telophase. So during prophase, there will be mainly condensation of chromosomes. Chromatin turns into chromosome. The appearance of asters, the nuclear membrane disappears. And I can see that each chromosome is made up of two chromatids. OK, now in most cases of prophase, there will be appearance also of spindle fiber. This is the spindle fiber, OK? During metaphase, there will be alignment of these chromosomes at the equatorial plate. So all chromosomes will line up at the equator of the cell, middle of the cell. And during anaphase, please pay attention, there is going to be a separation, but we don't say of chromosomes, separation of sister chromatids. So this is a chromosome. What is going to divide is the centromere. This is the centromere. It's going to divide. And after its division, you are going to see that each sister chromatid separate. We don't say divide, separate and migrate to opposite pole. OK, so here you will still have to an equal four. And here you will still have to an equal four. Remember what I said at the beginning of this uh, video that when counting the number of chromosomes, we don't care about the number of chromatids per chromosome. OK, so this is one chromosome with two chromatids. This is one whole chromosome with one chromatid. I don't care. OK, so at the end, during telophase, there will be constriction of the cell membrane formation of two daughter cells in each daughter cells in each daughter cell sorry you are going to obtain the same number of chromosomes as the mother cell so if you start here with two and equal four you will end up here with two and equal four in every single daughter cell okay <clears throat> now let's talk rapidly about the general diagram of meiosis. Now, please, I want to make sure that you understand that interphase comes before meiosis only, okay? Where there will be replication, uh, preparation for the cell division, and meiosis occurs only in the germ cells or in the sex cells. And when meiosis occurs, you are going to obtain the gametes, okay? So meiosis include two division, meiosis one, which is called also reductional division, and meiosis two, which is called also equational division. So why do we call meiosis one reductional division? Because the number of chromosomes will be reduced into half. So here I have four chromosomes. In the daughter cells after the reductional division or meiosis 1, you are going to obtain the half the number of chromosomes, so n equal to. See? So starting here, you won't have any more pairs of chromosomes. You won't have any more homologous chromosomes. Okay? And what happened during meiosis 1 is the separation of homologous chromosomes. OK, so separation of homologous chromosomes means a whole chromosome will come to the cell and its homologous will go to the other cell. And the same goes for the rest of chromosomes. However, in meiosis 2 or the equational division, equation in math means equal, right? This is called equational division because the number of chromosomes remains the same. OK, so n equal to, you still have here n equal to in every single cell. But during equational division, there is separation of sister chromatids. OK, so here there is separation of sister chromatids. At the end of meiosis, 
there will be formation of four daughter cells, each containing the half of the number of chromosomes of the mother cell, okay? Okay, now let's solve some samples. One, most multicellular eukaryotes form gametes by. So, one, and I, I, I did put this sentence لخبركن انه مش انا اذا بشوف كلمة او كلمتين ما بعرف معناتهم بعمل panic so even if you don't know what's the meaning of eukaryotes it's fine okay شو, شو الكي ورد هون form gametes so انا كيف بيتصنع عندي gametes احنا كل اللي بنعرفه انه بيتصنع عندي gametes من مين من الميوسس اوكي بس بما انه قطعت معنا بس بدي اشرح لكم الفرق بين بروكاريوتس ويوكاريوتس لانه هذا السؤال كثير بيقطع بامتحانات الدخول سو يوكاريوتس هن ذا سيلز يو نو وذ ا نيوكلير ممبرين اند ذا دي ان اي از انكلوزد انسايد ذا نيوكلير ممبرين هاو ايفر بروكاريوتس دونت هاف ا نيوكليس ذي دو هاف كروموزومز اور كروماتين بس ذس كروموزوم اور كروماتين از Um, is free in the cytoplasm. It's not enclosed in the nuclear membrane. Plus, the prokaryote uh, has another type of uh, DNA material, a circular one. This is what we call a plasmid. Hey, the mom the evil eukaryote. Okay, multicellular, multi يعني many cellular. مثل نحنا we are made up of many cells. Acts unicellular. Unicellular organisms are the organisms that are made up of one cell only. Chromatin condenses into chromosomes in which phase of the cell cycle. So we have just mentioned that condensation takes place in prophase. However, decondensation takes place in telophase. And finally, at which phase of mitosis are chromosomes usually photographed in the preparation of a karyotype? It's during metaphase. لأنه مثل ما قلنا بالمتافيز بيكونوا very well individualized قادرة أشوف الكروموزومز very well condensed and that's why I use colchicine in order to block cell division at mitosis. إذا حبيتوا هيدي الطريقة فيكن تنضموا لإلي ببرنامج اسمه To Succeed in Biology Entrance Exam مطرح ما بشرح لكم كل دروس البيولوجي الملغية واللي مش ملغية واللي بتوصلوا لها بالمدرسة ولا أكيد مع سامريز منحل كتير سامبلز ومش بس هيك في فيديو خصوصي بعلمكن فيهم كيف تجاوبوا على هيك نوع من الأسئلة كيف تفكروا بطريقة أنه تقدروا تلاقوا الجواب الصح حتى لو أنتم مش عارفين الجواب إذا حابين تنضموا ضغطوا على الرابط عندي تحت بالكابشن